Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Savetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro, and today we have a special guest, Michael Gunning, joining us from Manchester, UK. How you doing? I'm good. I'm not bad. I'm trying to stay as positive as I can in the current times. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing as well as I can be. Uh, so tell us about uh, what the current environment is like here in mid-2020. What is the what is the situation like for you? Yeah, so this is week 16 of not being in the water, which, you know, for every summer is just absolutely crazy at the minute. Um, you know, last week they announced that the outdoor pools can open, but obviously, you know, the UK, there isn't really many outdoor swimming pools at all. So we're still kind of waiting for the go ahead of like the indoor swimming pools, but we are hoping it will be in the next two weeks. So fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. and, and what have you been doing in, in the 16 weeks? Yeah, I think I've just been trying to set like different goals and obviously all on land. I think it's so hard being a swimmer, being outside of the pool because nothing really replicates it on land. Um, but I've been mixing it up. Obviously, I've been doing my cardio and flexibility and I've just been trying to do what I can, you know, in, in the times like everyone I'm sure around the world. So, but I've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying mixing it up and trying something new. Yeah, certainly different. Uh, tell us about your swimming background and, and so maybe walk us through from getting into the sport of swimming and then walk us through to where we are today. Yeah, so, you know, my parents are not really strong swimmers themselves and they kind of pushed me and my little brother into swimming quite young, I think four or five years old. And I didn't really like it at first. I was quite reluctant to get in. But I think as soon as I found the love for it, as soon as I, you know, I love diving underwater and I liked doing things that not many other people can do. And, you know, from there I went, I moved to a swimming club and kind of went through the ranks of a swimming club and I just really enjoyed it. I loved my very first early morning training session. And, you know, I think from a very young age, I always wanted to qualify for world championships. I wanted to represent my country. And for me, I'm very lucky. I've got dual nationality. So um, I live in the UK and I was born in the UK, but my dad is from Jamaica. Um, so from all of my junior swimming career, like kind of going into my senior, I represented GB, um, kind of got picked for all these different open water camps and European juniors. And, and yeah, in 2016, I decided to start representing my dad's heritage of Jamaica. And um, yeah, I went to the World Championships in 2017 and 2019. So um, Olympics was definitely on the cards. I was, you know, training was going really well for this year. And I was really looking forward to just seeing how I do, seeing how, you know, what the summer would bring for me. But obviously, they pushed back a year. So it's still my aim. I'm still going to be going, hopefully, for Tokyo 2021. Um, but yeah, just with new, new goals. <laughs> right. But what was it like going to the 2017 World Championships in Budapest, Hungary? That must have been amazing. Oh, Budapest is absolutely lovely and you know they just did put on a show the pool was amazing and I think for me because it was my first world championships I was so nervous and kind of my main event was taken over so much by nerves but you know the rest of the experience when I look back it was just an amazing world championships and just inspired me to carry on and keep achieving and keep kind of being a role model for so many. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that being a role model? Um, you know, what impact do you hope to have in your swimming career? Yeah, you know, from an early age, I was always told that black people can't swim and, you know, had loads of different stereotypes thrown at me. And you know, I think it's because, you know, when you look across the board of swimming, and you know, there's not many black swimmers. And I think it's so nice to see, you know, countries you know, having ethnic, all these different, you know, things that are different because there's no, this, a good swimmer has to be like this. You know, you look across, you know, Simone Manuel Jackson, so many people, like there's so many amazing swimmers out there. And for me, you know, I looked up to so many people like Michael Phelps and, you know, in swimming and different sports. So I think for me, I just wanted to show people that it can be done. And, you know, I love breaking barriers. I love, you know, trying new things and showing people that things can be done. And yeah, for me, like I just loved going to world championships and showing people that I can swim butterfly and I am good at it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. I, I watched in one of your interviews online, you talked about how you you have, you know, you want to be the support network almost for a lot of other swimmers and you get messages. And can you talk about, you know, how maybe your personal experience of going through things can help others and, and how you want to be that support network for people? Yeah, for me, you know, my team was such an important thing. You know, I really combined in my team and you know, we've all got each other's backs. When you go to competitions, you are with that team. And I think I found from, you know, really early on, I love being supported. I love kind of going to competitions and seeing my team on poolside cheering me on. And 
you know, one of the things I did really suppress and struggle with growing up was my sexuality. And, you know, I didn't really feel like I could tell people because I was worried about what people would say or how they would see me differently. But I think, you know, since coming out as gay, so many people have reached out just to support me and to say that they support my journey. And, you know, obviously from not being able to swim, from my, like my parents not being able to swim, you know, they wanted me to do something and have confidence in myself. And, you know, my sexuality was one thing that I never really had many role models growing up to be, you know, who I wanted to be like and kind of who I should be. Um, so I think for me, I just want to show people that, you know, no matter your sexuality, your gender, you know, it's, it's just as long as you're happy and you're you in yourself, you can go to competitions and, you know, when you see me around poolside, I'm really happy, I'm really bubbly. And, you know, I think you're always at next to you think, oh, should I be more serious? Should I... <laughs> know be muscular and slap myself but actually for me how I swim best is by smiling and you know that for me was opening up about every aspect of my life I think that's one that's something that people can notice actually if, they, if they're not familiar with you in person if you go online and you just go to your social or anything you're always smiling and yeah. I think I think everyone can use some you know positivity uplifting where do you think that positivity uh, comes from and, and you know because some people it's, it's not easy you know it's hard to put a smile on their face so for you it seems to come a little bit more naturally where do you think that's from i think that's a hard one i just i really really enjoy what i do um you know from an early age i loved being in the water and as soon as i found what i loved in the water everything else just came with it um you know i love putting a, a smile on my friends faces and no matter what Whatever I can do, I just try and give love and give support. And, you know, don't get me wrong, like there are days when I'm a little bit down and kind of when, I, when we went into lockdown in the UK, you know, and I didn't have some in, I was a little bit lost and I did, yeah, I wasn't smiling as much because I was so worried about the future and like the unknown. But I think, you know, just finding one goal and going for that. For me, like I've been setting myself little goals every day just to try and achieve whether it's, you know, stretching every day or, um, yeah, just doing like 10 press-ups a day. Like I think just setting realistic goals because if you meet a goal, no matter how small, no matter how big, like it will just make you happy. So that's what I try to do. <laughs> yeah. And can you tell us about setting these SMART goals? This is something we talk about at MySuper all the time about they need to be specific, measurable, time, right? So when you have something like the global pandemic and it sort of throws everything off, how do you readjust and recalibrate so that way you're still motivated and working towards something yeah i think you know for me i kind of the first two weeks was tough because i didn't have a routine no one knew what was happening and you know panic started to seep in about training and everything and it wasn't after the two weeks that i kind of sat down and i got pen and paper and i thought right what am i going to do every single day i'm going to wake up at this time i'm going to go for a run i'm going to do cardio in the evening i'm going to do this and i'd like just write a little bit of a plan about what i could do just to keep yourself motivated um, I think, you know, one of the biggest things for me, knowing that everyone was in the same position around the world, it really helped me. I think it's different if you know that one country, you know, is shut down and all, everyone else around the world is training properly, but we've all had to adapt. And, you know, I brought so much motivation from there and thought, well, let's mix some stuff around. Let's, you know, I don't really go on the bike much, but I've done some biking and I think it was just nice to do something different. So, yeah, just finding something different and just enjoying it and working hard at the same time. Yeah. What, what's your favorite dry land uh, training exercise that you can do in your home or just you don't need a gym? Yeah, so anyone that knows me will know that I don't actually like dry land stuff. I mm. much prefer, I'd rather be in the water 40 hours a week than be doing mm. any land stuff. So for me, this has been a little bit of a nightmare. Um, but I think just trying to make it as similar to swimming as I possibly can. You know, I've been doing some different planks with, like, with this swimming arm stroke, and I've just been trying to, yeah, simu like, simulate what I would do in the pool with like therabands, and um, I've kind of enjoyed, yeah, enjoyed doing that. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's awesome. Let's uh, switch gears a little bit. Can you tell us about the importance that you see from your perspective of diversity in aquatics and, you know, what, what that means to you? Yeah, you know, obviously the Black Lives Movement has been going around and I think, you know, lots of people have, you know, want to say and want to speak up about different experiences that they've had. Um, but I think, you know, from an early age, I've never really experienced any racism. I've been very, very lucky that, you know, I have... 
I've been, yeah, been so lucky in my life not to experience any of that. And, you know, when I was swimming for Team GB in Great Britain, you know, I was one of the only black swimmers on the team. And no one really looked at me differently. Everyone just saw me as a swimmer. I was performing well. And, you know, I think the value of that and like how I felt about that was just so confident. Um, but obviously, you know, lots of people around the world don't have that as well. So I think it's so important to speak up and to, to educate ourselves, you know, like whether it's someone in the class that is different to us, whether they've had a different upbringing. I think it's just so important to visualise that and to, yeah, to educate people. So um, I've definitely been learning a lot. I think I've been quite naive to, you know, black lives, you know, all around the world and in different organisations. So I think it's been amazing to hear different people's story and to hear what they've experienced and, yeah, just know what we can change because I think you know when you walk on pool, pool side you don't want to be you don't want to feel different you don't want to be excluded and I think for a long time my sexuality did make me feel that way but I think as soon as I kind of spoke about it and I got people's opinion like so many people are so supportive and you know I think the swing community we are so close you know we all have, have each other's back and it's amazing mm-hmm. great and what advice do you have for swimmers who maybe they're, they're struggling and Maybe they have challenges, whether it's ethnicity, sexuality, just any challenge they might have in, in that regard. Like, what advice do you have for them? Yeah, you know, just stay positive. Um, everyone's going to go through some ups and downs in swimming alone, let alone, let alone the outside factors. Um, but just do things in your own time. You know, don't feel pressure from anyone else to feel a certain way to, you know, and obviously for so many people, you know, some swimmers might not want to go to the Olympics. So I think everyone has different agendas, everyone has different goals and um, yeah, just don't rush anything. Don't feel like you have to feel a certain way. Just be yourself and if you're happy in yourself, then everyone else will be happy around you. Awesome. I'll always try and be happy. I like it. Uh, <laughs> what What are your future plans right now? So we've got, it's, it's 2020 right now and we're working towards, you know, a hopeful Olympics 2021. What, what do you, what do you see in the next 12 months and then maybe beyond that? Yeah, so Olympics is definitely on the cards for me. I want to train and do everything I can to qualify and to get there. Um, so for me, you know, as soon as swimming pools reopen again, however that, that is, I'm not sure the new procedures now, but mm. I'll definitely be trying my best to get on that team. Um, yeah, swimming for Team Jamaica next year. And I think just enjoying the process, you know, everyone's kind of life's been turned upside down. So um, yeah, with every negative, We've just got to jump over that bollard and just try and enjoy our road to Tokyo. Um, but yeah, after the 12 months, I oh, there's so many things I'd like to do. But, you know, for me, my passion is working with children. And I'd love to kind of get into the children entertainment route, whether it's presenting or I just want to give back, and I think, and inspire people from a younger generation. Um, because, yeah, I was I used to love school and I felt so amazing at school. And yeah, I just want to kind of give back in that way, I think. Mm-hmm. And I know you've you've spoken at schools and you give uh, presentations and inspire children and I guess people of all ages. Uh, yeah. What Do you have any particular stories that were especially inspiring or empowering for you or, or any highlights you'd like to share? Yeah, I think I have so many. I have so many right. amazing experiences. But I think for me was when I qualified for my very first team in um, in for GB back in 2010, I think it was, and I qualified in the open water race. Um, so it was the European Lane Cup and it was in Rome and I'd never done a 10K before and I think I qualified for my 1500, I'd done a really good 1500 and we travelled to Rome and we got all the kit and it was such an exciting moment for me but I didn't actually finish the race because I got hypothermia and um, I remember being fished out at 6.6k and I honestly didn't know where I was, I didn't know what was happening and you know obviously we train so hard every day of our life to achieve our goals and dreams and for me in that moment I felt so embarrassed, I felt yeah just so cut up because you know this is what I trained for and to not finish a race um I was just heartbroken but you know many people thought it was gonna yeah get me down that I wouldn't want to do open water anymore but I think because I was so ambitious I really wanted to prove everyone wrong and I wanted to show that I hadn't done it but I still can and um that following year I did win gold at the European yeah open water um in the elite race and it was an amazing feeling and I think 
you know, I don't do open water now because I, you know, I, my event's the Challenge of Butterfly, but I loved kind of breaking that barrier and showing people that I can do it and kind of how much of a tough cookie I was. Um, so I think that's one of one of my highlights, really. <laughs> that's awesome. And I think that's a, it's a positive note to finish on. Uh, always keep moving, stay positive, have a smile on your face. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you're an inspiration. And we'll leave all of your social media handles and everything linked in the description below. So make sure you guys follow Michael and his journey for 2021 and beyond. So thanks again so much. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. Stay positive. Woo.